Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're taking a look at the next batch of new cards. We've got about 15 to look at for this batch and then hopefully we'll be able to do the next batch in a couple days. They tend to come out in about two day lots which is fairly good for me as it makes easy videos so that's always fun. But the first one is a Forte Ruler of Skies, a 7 drop of 5 4 storm for Dragoncraft. Last word at the start of your next turn give a plus 3 plus 1 to a random Dragoncraft follower in your hand. This is actually pretty decent. It's Definitely killable though, unlike the original Forte. But the last word is actually very reasonable at buffing up your remaining followers. So if you can stick this to a board where you already have some board flood, this is definitely going to be fairly decent and should be reasonable to play with Storm as a 7 drop 5 4 Storm with a 7 damage evolves is actually still really good. Then next up we have uh, Cynthia, the Queen's Blade, a 6 drop 5 7 legendary for Forest Craft fanfare. Give another unevolved allied follower, forest follower the ability to evolve for zero evolution points. During your turn, whenever another allied follower evolves, summon two fairy wisps. Evolve, summon two fairies. During your turn, whenever another allied follower evolves, summon two fairy wisps, but retains that effect. So, realistically, since it is when another allied follower, you can't obviously use this one in the same turn, but if you play it, get it out, you can potentially end up with a pretty quick four card board with the fairy wisps, since fairies and fairy wisps have the same stat line, so that's fairly easy. And they shouldn't be banishable when there's someone like that, so that'll be fine. Overall, really solid card, even if you just evolve on its own, it's instantly three bodies with a decent stat line, so an impressive one for forest. Then we have Destructive Succubus, a 10 drop of 6 6 fanfare. Deal 3 damage to all enemies if vengeance is active for you. Summon 2 serpents and give all allied serpents ward during your turn. Whenever an allied follower evolves, subtract 1 from the cost of this card. So you can make this cheaper through evos. Looks like blood is moving through to serpent evo effects, which is interesting. And should be a lot of fun to mess around with. Then we have. Michelin Elf, or Michelin Elf, I'm Mechelin Elf, I'm not really sure how we want to pronounce that. Anyway, 7 drop, oh sorry, Mecha Lance actually Elf, if I'm going to read it that way, because it's two, if you read it as two words, it makes sense. Anyway, 7 drop, 6, 3, Gold, Forestcraft, Machina, it is a Rush follower, whenever this follower attacks an enemy follower, reduce damage to this follower to zero till the end of turn, and deal X damage to the enemy leader, X equals the attack of this follower, minus the defense of the enemy follower, so... That's actually really not too bad. If you go up against a one one drop fairy, for example, just as a quick reference point, you attack with this thing with rush, you're instantly dealing five damage to the opponent and removing the fairy in the same turn. So really quite a solid card. Then we have Presto Changeo, a two drop spell for rune, transform an enemy follower or amulet into Joycraft Sammy. That actually would hurt quite a bit to have it transformed into a Joycrafter Sammy. Uh, I'm trying to remember which one that is, but from memory it's just a pretty generic follower, so a 2-drop transform an enemy follower or amulet is definitely going to shake up the meta. Uh, cheap amulet transformation is always a really solid option, and any kind of banishment or removal on those is insane. So this card will easily counter a lot of big cards from things like Haven and Dragon and even probably Shadow, whether it's a follower or a amulet, so that's absolutely nuts. Then we have Legia Sky Saber, Saber, sorry, it's a 4 drop 3-3. Three, three. So it's a Swordcraft Commander. During your turn, when an allied officer follower comes into play, evolve this follower. Whenever this follower attacks, if there isn't an allied nano, the Dawnblade in play, summon a nano the Dawnblade. Okay, so that's going to be, of course, one of the tokens from this. Uh, whenever the follower attacks, if you have your 10th turn or later, summon a Twilight Blade, uh, sorry, put a Twilight Blade into your hand. So Nano the Dawnblade is a 1 drop 1 1 Bane, that's actually reasonably solid, it's also an Officer. Then Twilight Bait is a 5 drop spell, deal 5 damage to all enemies, another really solid card for Sword, and actually some decent removal if you're going for, of course, really late game, where I can actually see just Nano being more valuable overall. Then we have Phantasmal Core, a 3 drop amulet for Shadowcraft, it is a Machina. It seems like every craft is getting 3 drop amulets, looking at all of them, we're going to go over a heap now. Fanfare, Enhance 7, Recover 1 Evolution Point. During your turn, this is of course a separate effect, during your turn, when an allied follower evolves, gain 10 shadows, then banish this amulet. So my understanding, reading through other people's understandings of this and from what I can gather, is the Fanfare Enhance effect is completely separate. That If you put a space between that and the bottom effect, that's how this works. So during your turn, even if you play this as a 3 drop and then you evolve something, you'll get 10 shadows, straight up. So insane value out of cards like these. 
We also have Sanity, Sa Saintly Core, which is a 3-drop Havencraft one, so again, following all that pattern. They follow all the same enhanced effects, so it's a recover and evolution point. During your turn, when an ally follower evolves, randomly banish one of the strongest enemy followers in play, then banish this amulet. So this one's a reasonable banish card. Uh, it's a pity that it's not as good as I think the other one. I think this would have been better as a heal, like banish and then heal equal to the attack or something would be good, but still a reasonably solid card. Then we have Arboral Core, which is the 3-drop Forest one, so Machina, of course, again, with the same recovery Evo point for the Enhanced 7. During your turn, when Allied Follower evolves, put Terry, two Fairy Wisps into your hand, then banish this amulet. Quite solid for 0-drops, I was hoping we'd get some more 0-drop buff for Forest, so we can build some decent decks around that. Then we have Saginuan Core, we'll go with that, Bloodcraft, 3-drop, same fanfare. During your turn, when an allied follower evolves, restore 10 defense to your leader, then banish his amulet. This is actually pretty nuts. Uh, self damage blood in particular could take advantage of this. You'd only have to play this out in the uh, mid game when you might be at risk of losing and buff all your health straight back up, which is nuts. So, absolutely crazy card for something like blood to use. Then we have Father Refinement, a 7 drop of 5 5 ward for Havencraft. It is, of course, Machina as well. Fanfare, put a repair mode into your hand. Change the cost of all repaired modes in your hand to zero. Can't take more than three damage at a time. Ward can't take more than three damage at a time, so still retaining that, of course, on Evo. But still like, quite a solid card, reducing all repair modes to zero. Repair mode, I believe, was a reasonably cheap heal card anyway, for memory. Uh, still fairly decent. Then we have Dragon's Ranch, an 8-drop Dragoncraft Amulet, is Countdown 2, Fanfare, randomly summon one of the following, Hellflame Dragon, Dragon, or Windblast Dragon at the start of your turn, randomly summon one of the remaining cards. So, as long as it hasn't played one of those, it's going to, of course, summon them at the start of the turn as well, so Fanfare when you play it, and then the start of your next turn, randomly summon one of the remaining cards. I'm guessing it'll just keep, keep stock of what one has already hit the board, even if it's destroyed? Hmm, interesting. We have a Death Guard, a one-drop spell for Shadowcraft. Give an allied follower the following effect. The next time this damage, this damage is dealt to this follower, reduce their damage to zero. Enhance four. Give all allied followers that effect instead. Reasonable enhance. Um, blocking one lot of damage could be crazy for a Ektar play. If you set up already on, say, turn 5, turn 6, summon a couple of extra weak drops, maybe one or two drop to go in on turn 6, play this for 4, give more protection basically, for at least one damage, basically a divine shield of sorts. And then play the following Ektar out, would be absolutely insane in Unlimited, although I'm not sure how it will go in rotation, i have to see some more shadow cards and see what decks kind of work with it. And that is the last card for this video, I hope you guys did enjoy it, hopefully we'll get some more of the amulets for the other classes, I think we only looked at four or five of them so far, so we haven't looked at absolutely all of them, but there, I'm sure there are more to come, I'm sure every class will get at least one, so if you guys did enjoy the video, hit the like button and subscribe for more content, until next time, see ya!